So we were 40 days in the rainforest of French Guiana. At the very beginning of the rainy season, we had rain. <laughs> a lot, <laughs> a lot. And after four days, five days, it's just, it's impossible to be protected. But I will change. So, okay, I will accept the rain and I will accept to be wet. I will accept to have uh, humidity everywhere. And it's okay. And at the very moment people do that, the, the life was much better. Christian Klott just came back from the first of three expeditions he is undertaking as part of the Deep Climate Project. With his team, he will be testing the limits of human adaptability. So the aim of Deep Climate is to try to understand how human beings can adapt to a new kind of living conditions. And of course, in the next year, one of the biggest new living conditions will be the climate change because we will have uh, more heat, more difficult weather, more wind, and we don't really know how we can adapt to this kind of conditions. So we try to study it by uh, taking 20 persons, 10 female and 10 male, and put them in new conditions. They live in, in France, in Switzerland, in normal uh, weather conditions, and suddenly we put them in the rainforest where it's really hot and wet. Uh, we put them in a polar area where it's really cold. We put them in a desert where it's really hot and dry. And we study them during 40 days, how they evolve. You might have heard of a deep time, Christian's last project in which he and a team of 15 people spent 40 days in a cave to study what happens when we lose time information. From this experience, he learned that the most important qualities for adaptation are not physical, but mental and social. We won't change our heart, we won't change our skin. All that is really uh, fixed and won't change at all. So it's really hard for the physiology of a person to adapt to a new kind of conditions. The brain instead is really able to change. The famous uh, plasticity of the brain is really working perfectly when suddenly a person is facing a new condition. But more than that, what we, we know, understand a bit more, is that a human being alone is slow to adapt to a new condition. But a group of people can be really quick because there's a cooperation. After 40 days hiking, rafting, and performing all kinds of scientific experiments in the wet and humid climate of French Guiana, the group of 20 climatonauts is now heading north of Finland into the polar circle for the cold part of their adventure. I'm a bit afraid that after 10, 15 days, people will begin to experience difficulties with, with cold and, and getting frostbite and this kind of thing. So we will really need to work together and to help each other not to have this kind of, of, of situation. The last leg of the expedition will take the team to Saudi Arabia for 40 days in the desert, testing their capacity to adapt to hot and arid conditions. Mr. Klott considers himself an explorer above all. He is not only exploring new environments that resemble our future in a changing climate, but also the boundaries of our capacity to adapt to these changes. I think the explorer, as always, has a role just to consider that there's always things to be discovered. It can be uh, with, with science. All these people seeking for new knowledge are explorers. The role of an explorer is to try to understand new things, to discover new knowledge, and to go back to explain to other persons and to help to increase the knowledge of humanity. We all explore, we just forget how much we need to explore. Thank you.